right. Good evening, everybody, to the uh, May 17th, 2023 Board of Education meeting, uh, open work session. Please uh, stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's myself there. Okay, uh, we met in closed session. Yes, so pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction and any other um, personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, has everybody had a chance to look at the agenda for tonight? Can I get a motion for approval? Yes, I move that we approve the, uh, the agenda as presented. Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, first uh, information item tonight, Agriculture Day presentation, Mr. Page. Good evening, Good evening. Brought to you a bouquet of flowers <laughs> and a little sign about that day awareness. Put that down for now. All right, let's go. Yes, there are. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, President Schifanelli, board members, Dr. Salins, executive team. For the record, my name is Michael Page. I'm a curriculum supervisor. And with me today, I have Ms. Jenny Rhodes from the University of Maryland's Extension Office. She is the principal agent of the agriculture and food systems. And we will be presenting to you in, in regards to our Ag Awareness Day that we have every year for our seventh graders. All right, well, welcome and thanks for coming out. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. I also would like to thank Lee Bridgman for uh, coming out also. I know she did want to. <laughs> I don't know. She's trying to hide, but she was an integral part of it. And, and also our FFA, uh, mm -hmm. just by chance, they, they came tonight, which is awesome. But awesome. Uh, Ag Day uh, couldn't happen without FFA, Mr. Stokes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's great to actually have them uh, yeah. present also. So thank you all. So uh, the purpose of this presentation is really to go, oh, let me recognize these yeah. ladies too. So we also had Janelle Ack, uh, McHenry um, from Thompson, Thompson Ag Consulting, um, and she is a programs and PR director there. She has been a, with Jenny and I since the very beginning. And same thing with Jessica Clark from Horizon Farm Credit. And as you can see, a lot of the community is involved um, in this initiative, and, it, and it's really amazing how, how they all come out and support. And Jessica has also been there since the very beginning, too. So I want to publicly thank them for being a part of this. The purpose is to provide Queen Anne's County's board um, with an overview of the 2023 Agriculture Awareness Day experience that welcomed all of our seventh graders to the 4-H park. And a little bit of background about this, uh, when we came together to design this day, we really wanted to focus it around standards uh, so that when the students uh, left our buildings, they were going to an experience in which they were going to be enriched with uh, not only the science standards, but also our environmental literacy standards um, in regards to agriculture. Um, the educational stations throughout the day provided insight into numerous agricultural topics um, and the stations embedded uh, introductions to many careers. And so that was one of the big aspects of, uh, of some of our conversation in regards to this day was we really wanted to show students uh, that about the agricultural community, but also that the jobs that are associated with that agriculture are our agricultural community. And that's kind of why we picked the seventh grade because we felt like, you know, they were getting done middle school, getting ready to go to high school and hopefully to help to, for them to start thinking Agriculture is not just about being a farmer, but there's lots of other things that are really connected to it. So I'll talk a little bit about our day. Uh, we bring two of the middle schools the first day and the other two uh, the second day. Mr. 
Paige helps to arrange the buses and, and that I think is one of the biggest jobs yeah. that we have is getting all the, all the students there. Once um, they get there, we put them, we, I, everybody's been to the 4-H park, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, so we put them, have you been to the 4-H park? Okay, just make sure. <laughs> Gotta make sure. Everybody's been to the county if fair. Not, I won't coming. smile. Yeah, if not, yeah, that's right. Uh, once we get there, we have, uh, so we made lots of changes probably ever since when we really started this and we're getting feedback and we get them on the, the grandstands out there right by the horse arena and we do a technology demonstration of, of a drone. And it really gets their attention, gets them focused. We talk about how we use drones uh, in agriculture and kind of give them a little talk of the day and, and how it's gonna go. And certainly our superintendent has been there also to to welcome, and we've had the Secretary of Agriculture. He didn't get to come this year, but he often comes and we bring a lot of uh, county commissioners in, representatives, we have federal representatives and also um, state, um, so very important. We have four stations. Those are our formal stations. So they will spend um, almost an hour, 50 minutes at each station. We have aquaculture, we call that uh, underwater farming. Certainly very important what we do uh, here in Queen Anne's County. Uh, aquaculture is very important to our industry, the <coughs> craving industry, the oyster industry, fishing. Uh, so they learn a little bit about that. You'll see a picture up there. They actually were gonna, in this picture, there's a um, baskets of oyster shells and they had to pick out oyster shells and then they had to throw them out, like they were gonna throw them out uh, into the river and they had to harvest them. And then they had to figure out whether they were gonna make money or, or not. So it was a whole math, a math deal and then to learn about what happens um, oysters in beds so we have wild beds and then we have uh, seeded beds and this was new this year we changed that station to be a little more interactive and work very well and then we have the seed to harvest and you can see we have the tractor and planter there and we have uh, the combine there also we have a, we had two farmers there that were helping uh, to teach about the tractor and the planter and the technology they get to get in the tractor they get to see uh, that's really, you know, what goes on all the computers. There's more computers, I think, uh, in a tractor than there are in most classrooms that I've been in. It's, it's very interesting for the kids. And then this year new was uh, one of the students uh, brought his combine. And so we had two of, the, of our FFA students teaching the seventh graders how a combine worked. And it was just, it's very refreshing, you know, when you see so, well, these two were in, I guess, 10th and 11th grade to teach 7th graders of how a combine works. Very important. And then uh, we go to the harvested table, and that was part of uh, the kids made flowers, and they learned, we were worried about, oh, we're not sure if they're going to like that, but they learned the parts of the flower with pollination, you know, bees, all that, you know, goes together. They really enjoyed that. And then food safety is also uh, part of that station. And we had the FFA students, we had written a curriculum for them and they came in and they started reading the curriculum and they circulated around five different stations to learn about, uh, about that. And then farm animals will seem to always be their favorite. Uh, I was actually teaching at Kent Island High School today in uh, Lacey Phelps's class uh, and teaching them about agriculture and they had been to Ag Awareness Day. So I figured they were probably one of the first students that came and you know what they remembered? The goats. <laughs> they love they love the little goats. Uh, so we have two barns uh, full of animals. Uh, they can touch, pet, you know, ask questions. The FF, most of them are 4-H's and FFA students that bring their animals to their projects of theirs and they talk to them. But first they'll go in a pavilion and they'll learn about um, what are all the parts of animals used for. You know, we eat them, but we also do lots of other things. When they learn that makeup is made and then you know, so we got a lot of that in, in the essays that we asked, asked them to write. And it's just, and new this year, we had a virtual reality. Uh, we had gotten those uh, goggles from the National Chicken Council who I work with uh, in DC. And I'd actually gone to New York City and showed this virtual reality so they can see inside a chicken house, they can see a processing plant and they can see a hatchery. And I didn't think the kids would like this, but as you can see, uh, it, it was a hit. So we had a, we had a really good day and the weather was good too. Absolutely. That, so that helped. I think I got lost in the chicken house. <laughs> <on> the <right. laughs> I think that's all. All right, very good. Go on. Oh, community, community involvement. involvement. So you can see from these pictures, we, each day uh, we took a picture of all the um, students, the adults, just our community. So it's not only the agriculture community, but other people that just want to say, hey, I want to 
uh, come out and, and volunteer uh, for the day. We have about 60 volunteers it takes every day um, to run this, it's, and it takes a lot. So now we have FFA students, we have 4-H uh, students uh, that come out. Of course, everybody that works for the University of Maryland, I ask them to come. We have people from the Western Shore, the Lower Shore, um, and then all of us. Did I miss anybody? You missed the horse and the salmon. Oh, yes, year. yeah, that's true. Yeah, we got <laughs> no, a horse in the picture this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're thinking about maybe incorporating that horse a little more uh, <laughs> next year. The, the students really did, um, did love, love the horse. But we, and we had 15, about 15, right, Mr. Stern? 15 to 20 each day. 15 to 20. And they liked it so much, they came, most of them, a lot of them came back the next day. So thank you, Mr. Stern, for letting them come back. We appreciate that very much. <laughs> And then, uh, then our sponsors, so we couldn't do this certainly without your help, the Board of Education help, and Michael's help. Uh, when we first started this, it started, I had an intern, and I told her she had a project she needed to, so this was her idea, and I'm like, oh, I'll never get past the Board of Education. And we went to Mr. Um, Page, and he's like, absolutely positively. So it's been a real success, so because of his support, and your support, and certainly uh, the, our whole community, we send out letters, we get um, letters of donation. We figured out, Lee was doing some work, and Lee, we had, what, $30,000 of in-kind? $30 of in-kind donations that it takes um, to run this, this day. So we, we are very appreciative, certainly, of all of our sponsors. And uh, I just wanted to highlight another connection that we have with the schools in terms of our essay contest. And uh, each middle school uh, will be, well, they went through an essay contest about why or how does agriculture affect the life every, my life every day. Um, and we'll give uh, a first place prize, a second place prize, a third place prize for each school and then we have an overall winner and uh, hope to present those uh, in the January, June board meeting. Um, and so, uh, you know, this, this essay contest, again, is, is really fun to read the essays that come from our seventh graders. And, it is. And, uh, you know, you highlighted the makeup portion, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. um, there are some other things that, that really, you know, they, in some of their essays, they are really passionate about what, what happened there. Um, and and the experience that they have and the positivity that came from it. It was just overall great to hear it from them, how they felt about the day. And then of course, I work for the University of Maryland Extension and we have to measure impacts. So all the things that we have to do, it's about impacts. Um, Mr. Page works with me, we, he sends it out to all the teachers and we have a pre and a post test. And this is just one of the questions that we ask, You know, what is their knowledge of farming or agriculture uh, before and after. So you can see that we have went from 12.6 to 40% um, um, of those of the students really knowing more about agriculture. And then each question, each station is able to ask one question. So we want to make sure that we show impacts. And if we're not, then we need to adjust. But for all of us, we're showing some impacts there. Oh, there's another one. And then, does <laughs> agriculture affects your life every day? We went from 46.5 to 84%. And I think that was, that, to me, that's an eye-opener that just shows that our students really don't understand probably where our food comes from, and that's part of our job. I think. And so, uh, you know, the, I'm just going to say we've had a wonderful partnership with you all, and I thank you all so much for all your hard work to make this day happen. Um, there is a little video in there. This video is from last year, um, but uh, it's a great video just to see what happens there and, and, and how the students interact with the, the farm community. Um, uh, you know, it's great, and we, I'm looking forward to it already for next sure. year. So um, thank you again for all your help. You're welcome. Thank you. All and right. This was the little display, the little uh, display we yeah. had at the beginning, <laughs> after the, the day. So, I was going to say, you guys might be having a little too much fun. This, but I guess <laughs> oh, that's don't worry, impossible. it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that's impossible, but uh, I'm really so impressed, and I'm I'm so so glad that you're here because you are the drivers for this. You know, both of you that started this program, you know, put it together, <clears throat> and it is uh, it's extremely important, especially for our county, you know, in particular, but uh, but you know, nationwide. And uh, so, thank you. Very very impressive. And it uh, seems like the kids are, you know, 
and join it. And the more we can get them outdoors and <coughs> learn outdoors, the, the better off everybody's going to be, I believe. So, so thanks. Anybody else? No, it's just, it is. It's very impressive. Um, and it's so important because even if you're not, if you don't stay right here in the Eastern Shore, you can take this knowledge and send it out because I don't think, you know, you probably are much more aware than most seventh graders and high schoolers of what goes on because we're in an ag county. But there's a lot of people have no clue whatsoever of how we obtain food um, and how, and the impact that, you know, all of this gentrification and this changing, you know, this zoning ha affects it. And so it's just very, very important. And I'm very impressed and proud that you guys are, are, are following it because it's not an easy job. I've always thought that if I can get someone to work for me who had, whose family works the land <laughs> are the best workers ever because they know what it means to be responsible. Um, they know that their li lives are in their hands, literally, you know, so very impressive. So thank you for this. We have a little gift for you. <laughs> if you have any Is it a right. goat? <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. Don't turn your back. <laughs> Staying at your house. He could. They could oh, stay. Okay. Okay. Staying at your house. <laughs> you have to open it up. And see what oh, that's funny. Uh -huh. Thank, thank you very much. Did you get them? Oh, that's cool. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm nice. having too much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you guys, do you all post this um, <coughs> event? Because it would be fun. Is it tag along? Oh, yeah, it's on the schedule. Yeah, if you would like to be posted. Yeah, I do. Nice. Thank you. I'll give it to Carrie for Mr. Smith. Thank you so much. Really, I Yeah, thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate all the hard work it makes. You know, to listen to the feedback and tweak things here and there, because I think it makes such a difference. Oh, and we really did. We, yeah. we sent out that post evaluation. They said they wanted more hands on, and yeah. that's what and, we did. And, I think and, they, from what I, from what I read from this year, yeah, they, they really were, really enjoyed they it. Were, like it, and so. it's it's a team effort. It's just yeah. not Michael and I. It, it's a lot of us. Yes, sure. Yeah. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you. Are you Thanks, Lee. Oh, yeah, okay. Up here. All right. Thanks for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Outdoor classroom update. Mr. Page again. All right, it's me again. <laughs> Take two. Uh, so I wanted to provide the, um, the board with an update in terms of Gears 2 um, and the Initiative 3, which is our outdoor exploration. And uh, this, uh, the purpose of this is just to provide you all with a little bit of background in terms of our timeline and our construction. This has been ongoing since uh, 2021. Uh, when we obtained the GEARS grant, which is the Governor's Emergency Educational Relief Funds. Um, these particular funds were uh, obtained in order to build outdoor classrooms for our students. The original proposal was to do all 14 schools, but due to uh, some of the constraints and some of the uh, economics in terms of the pricing and so on, uh, it just wasn't viable at that point. So we worked with finance, we worked with um, uh, our principals and, and, and uh, our operations in order to figure out what would be the best option. Um, and uh, we came up with, with um, switching a little bit in terms of where would we want to see these first um, and then maybe try to obtain a little bit funds later on. So we chose the eight, eight elementary schools and we were able to um, manipulate them or change the, the way that the money was going to be allocated in order to get all eight elementary schools up and running in terms of an outdoor um, education or out there classroom. So just a quick update from this past year. Uh, in early April, we were able to obtain the permits for uh, our elementary schools. Um, you know, we, we were able to start work early on some of the schools that were in uh, Churchill, Southersville, and uh, Centerville, the, the townships. Um, we have had some uh, we've been having to work with 
the Queen Anne's County permitting a little bit in order to get some of the other ones up and running a little. Um, we had some things that we needed to provide for them additional. But so I'll show you some pictures of, the, of those four schools that we first started with. So they're doing two waves, four schools and then four schools. But uh, late April, we got into prepping the sites, um, setting the posts and the concrete. We installed the rough, rough installation of the electrical. Um, and then we have just, uh, just this past week, we poured the slabs at, um, at uh, Centerville Elementary School and at Kennard Elementary School. So that looks, it looks great. So things are coming along really well. Um, in May, we're looking to get the roofs uh, and the tables for, for the construction. And then we hope to have this all wrapped up by June and then look forward to some professional development, uh, you know, going into August in terms of how to utilize, the, utilize those classrooms. So these are, these are some of the, the, this is the way that it's going to look. Um, we selected again a 22 by a 32 slab uh, with the posts. It's kind of a pavilion structure. They'll have a green metal roof for our, our green classrooms, green schools initiative. Um, they'll also have green tables. So it's a place where students can go outdoors with their teachers and learn. Um, you know, the, the big thing here is that these, these rooms are not just for science. These rooms are not just for environmental literacy. These rooms are for anybody who wants to utilize them. As you indicated earlier, Mr. Schifanelli, you know, we want to get students outdoors. There's benefits for getting them outdoors in terms of fresh air, uh, being in nature, and so on. So these are strategically located around the schools so that they are in, um, you know, areas that are close to the schools in case we needed to move students. Um, and they're also, uh, we tried to pick places that are kind of all, you know, um, in, in nature. Um, so uh, our hope is to deliver that professional development and give the, give the teachers an opportunity to bring their students into a different setting rather than the brick and mortar classrooms. Um, these, these are the pictures and I tried to do them kind of chronologically here. So uh, the excavation on the left-hand side, um, you can see them kind of clearing the area, and then they, they bored or, or um, uh, you know, they got the auger and uh, created the holes for the posts, um, and then they had to set those posts with concrete. And this, these particular images are of um, Southersville Elementary School. Um, this, is, this is Church Hill. Uh, and Southersville. So on the left-hand side, you can see where um, they have started to put down the, the stone for the concrete um, and framed it out for the pathways. That's one thing I do want you all to know is that part of this was that it was all ADA compliant. So any student is going to be able to access these from, from our schools um, so they can utilize uh, the walkways in order to get there. Um, that middle picture is, shows the electric there. One of the key things that we wanted to um, ensure was that if students did bring their Chromebooks out, or, uh, they, could, they could utilize them there and that they could utilize electricity. Um, also, if a teacher wanted to bring a projector out or some type of way of uh, utilizing instruction there that she, could, she or he could plug into the electric. Um, and then finally, that, uh, that top right picture is uh, Churchill Elementary School. And you can see the posts are there with the concrete, um, the concrete slab. And then uh, what's happening now at, at those areas are they are starting to grade the grade the um, the sides of the um, the slab um, so that they are smooth, and then they'll seed and and straw them. Any questions about that? So in conclusion, you know it's we're we're, we're moving forward, and we'll have them done by June and ready for next year. So we're I, we're really excited. You'll have really excited. Done by June. Excuse me? You'll have all eight done by June? Yes, so correct. So you got all the permits and everything. So this week we just finalized all the permits with Queen Anne's County. So that they are ready to go. Okay. Rock and roll. Great. That's good. Yes. All right. Any comments, questions? Anyone else? Thank you, Mike. We Thank appreciate you. everything. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And as you step down, we're going to move out to action items. Queen Anne's County High School FFA overnight field trip. Speaking of the FFA, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Stokes. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, good evening. Uh, we are three officers from the Queen Anne's County FFA chapter. Um, I'm Melissa Crosley and I'm the president. I'm Lily Dean and I'm the historian. I'm Michael Carroll. I'm the vice president, second vice president. All right. Well, welcome to the board. Uh, we are here today um, to ask for approval to go to our state convention in June. So during state convention, we would be competing in public speaking for those who come, uh, sorry, who those for who actually made it in regionals and we'd be competing in states, which for LDE's leadership de development events. Um, we are also having two teams compete in CDEs, which is career development events, uh, which is opportunities for students to compete in um, career-based um, competitions. Um, and we have two teams competing. Uh, we have the turf team and we have um, ag knowledge team. Oh, I have a chance to talk now. Okay. <laughs> so one of the great things about us, if we, if you allow us to go to states, is that we get to meet other chapters from across, across Maryland and we also get to make new friends. And there's also team building exercises during this. There's leadership development programs that they do, they offer during the state convention and that I believe there is a dance sometime during the week that we get to meet new people. And our chapters also plan to do some team building exercises while we're out there. Okay, Any, is that it, anything else? Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah. All right, and um, what are the dates, I'm sorry? Um, the days are June 27th through the 29th. Okay, all right. And I see some folks in the back taking a picture from back there. So I'm going to get one of you guys up here <laughs> and I'm going to send it to her later or him, Mr. Stokes. Okay. Um, anybody comments? No comments. No. Mr. President, I move that we approve the overnight field trip for the <clears throat> Queen Anne's County High School FFA to travel to the University of Maryland College Park to attend the Maryland FFA State Convention. The fiscal impact would be 7,500 for the bus and 150 each per student for 20 students and budgeted with their chapter fundraising. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys, and, and best of luck. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Can't wait to hear all and then, the other side. Yeah, that's right. Back. After you get back in September, we want a full brief. <laughs> what happened? How'd it go? All right. Thank you so Have much. Fun. Thank okay. Have a great evening. Nice. Okay. Everybody's had a chance to review and uh, ask questions about the human resources and substitute bus driver report. Mm -hmm. uh, here, a motion. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we accept the HR report as presented. Second. second. All right. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, uh, future meetings and events, June 7th, 2023 at 6 p.m. will be our regular open session meeting, uh, June 21st, 2023, and 5 p.m. will be our uh, June work session. And anybody got anything else? No? Okay, then can I hear a motion to adjourn open session? I move to adjourn. Second. All right, and are we gonna have- And open, oh. reopen, closed session. All right, and open, reopen, close session. We've got a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, good evening, everybody. <laughs>